Magnetoresistive random access memory MRAM is a type of non-volatile random access memory which stores data in magnetic domains. Developed in the mid-1980s, proponents have argued that magnetoresistive RAM will eventually surpass competing technologies to become a dominant or even universal memory. Presently, other memory technologies such as flash RAM and DRAM have practical advantages that have so far kept MRAM in a niche role in the market. It is currently in production by Everspin Technologies, and other companies, including Global Foundries and Samsung, have announced in 2016 product plans. A recent, comprehensive review article on magnetoresistance and magnetic random access memories is available as an open access paper in Materials Today. Description Unlike conventional RAM chip technologies, data in MRAM is not stored as electric charge or current flows, but by magnetic storage elements. The elements are formed from two ferromagnetic plates, each of which can hold a magnetization, separated by a thin insulating layer. One of the two plates is a permanent magnet set to a particular polarity, the other plate's magnetization can be changed to match that of an external field to store memory. This configuration is known as a magnetic tunnel junction and is the simplest structure for an MRAM bit. A memory device is built from a grid of such cells. The simplest method of reading is accomplished by measuring the electrical resistance of the cell. A particular cell is typically selected by powering an associated transistor that switches current from a supply line through the cell to ground. Due to the tunnel magnetoresistance, the electrical resistance of the cell changes due to the relative orientation of the magnetization in the two plates. By measuring the resulting current, the resistance inside any particular cell can be determined, and from this the magnetization polarity of the writable plate. Typically if the two plates have the same magnetization alignment low resistance state, this is considered to mean 1. While if the alignment is antiparallel the resistance will be higher high resistance state and this means 0. Data is written to the cells using a variety of means. In the simplest classic design, each cell lies between a pair of right lines arranged at right angles to each other, parallel to the cell, one above and one below the cell. When current is passed through them, an induced magnetic field is created at the junction, which the writable plate picks up. This pattern of operation is similar to magnetic core memory, a system commonly used in the 1960s. This approach requires a fairly substantial current to generate the field, however, which makes it less interesting for low power uses, one of MRAM's primary disadvantages. Additionally, as the device is scaled down in size, there comes a time when the induced field overlaps adjacent cells over a small area, leading to potential false writes. This problem, the half-select or write disturb problem, appears to set a fairly large minimal size for this type of cell. One experimental solution to this problem was to use circular domains written and read using the giant magnetoresistive effect, but it appears that this line of research is no longer active. A newer technique, spin transfer torque (STT) or spin transfer switching, uses spin-aligned, polarized electrons to directly torque the domains. Specifically, if the electrons flowing into a layer have to change their spin, this will develop a torque that will be transferred to the nearby layer. This lowers the amount of current needed to write the cells, making it about the same as the read process. There are concerns that the classic Type of MRAM cell will have difficulty at high densities due to the amount of current needed during writes, a problem that STT avoids. For this reason, the STT proponents expect the technique to be used for devices of 65 nanometers and smaller. The downside is the need to maintain the spin coherence. Overall, the STT requires much less write current than conventional or toggle MRAM. Research in this field indicates that STT current can be reduced up to 50 times by using a new composite structure. However, higher speed operation still requires higher current. Other potential arrangements include 
thermal assisted switching TAS MRAM, which briefly heats up, reminiscent of phase change memory, the magnetic tunnel junctions during the write process and keeps the MTJs stable at a lower temperature the rest of the time, and vertical transport MRAM. VMRAM, which uses current through a vertical column to change magnetic orientation, a geometric arrangement that reduces the right disturb problem and so can be used at higher density. A review article provides the details of materials and challenges associated with MRAM in the perpendicular geometry. The authors describe a new term called pentalemma which represents a conflict in five different requirements such as write current, stability of the bits, readability, read, write speed and the process integration with CMOS. The selection of materials and the design of MRAM to fulfill those requirements are discussed. Topic. Comparison with other systems Topic. Density The main determinant of a memory system's cost is the density of the components used to make it up. Smaller components, and fewer of them, mean that more cells can be packed onto a single chip, which in turn means more can be produced at once from a single silicon wafer. This improves yield, which is directly related to cost. DRAM uses a small capacitor as a memory element, wires to carry current to and from it, and a transistor to control it, referred to as a 1T1C cell. This makes DRAM the highest density RAM currently available, and thus the least expensive, which is why it is used for the majority of RAM found in computers. MRAM is physically similar to DRAM in makeup, and often does require a transistor for the write operation, though not strictly necessary. The scaling of transistors to higher density necessarily leads to lower available current, which could limit MRAM performance at advanced nodes. <laughs> Power consumption Since the capacitors used in DRAM lose their charge over time, memory assemblies that use DRAM must refresh all the cells in their chips 16 times a second, reading each one and rewriting its contents. As DRAM cells decrease in size it is necessary to refresh the cells more often, resulting in greater power consumption. In contrast, MRAM never requires a refresh. This means that not only does it retain its memory with the power turned off but also there is no constant power draw. While the read process in theory requires more power than the same process in a DRAM, in practice the difference appears to be very close to zero. However, the write process requires more power to overcome the existing field stored in the junction, varying from three to eight times the power required during reading. Although the exact amount of power savings depends on the nature of the work, more frequent writing will require more power. In general, MRAM proponents expect much lower power consumption, up to 99% less compared to DRAM. STT-based MRAMs eliminate the difference between reading and writing, further reducing power requirements. It is also worth comparing MRAM with another common memory system, flash RAM. Like MRAM, flash does not lose its memory when power is removed, which makes it very common in applications requiring persistent storage. When used for reading, flash and MRAM are very similar in power requirements. However, flash is rewritten using a large pulse of voltage about 10 volts that is stored up over time in a charge pump, which is both power-hungry and time-consuming. In addition, the current pulse physically degrades the flash cells, which means flash can only be written to some finite number of times before it must be replaced. In contrast, MRAM requires only slightly more power to write than read, and no change in the voltage, eliminating the need for a charge pump. This leads to much faster operation, lower power consumption, and an indefinitely long lifetime. Topic. Data retention 
MRAM is often touted as being a non-volatile memory. However, the current mainstream high-capacity MRAM, spin transfer torque memory, provides improved retention at the cost of higher power consumption, i.e., higher write current. In particular, the critical minimum write current is directly proportional to the thermal stability factor delta, the retention is in turn proportional to EXP delta. The retention, therefore, degrades exponentially with reduced write current. Topic. Speed Dynamic random access memory DRAM performance is limited by the rate at which the charge stored in the cells can be drained for reading or stored for writing. MRAM operation is based on measuring voltages rather than charges or currents, so there is less settling time needed. IBM researchers have demonstrated MRAM devices with access times on the order of 2 nanoseconds, somewhat better than even the most advanced DRAMs built on much newer processors. A team at the German Physikalische Technische Bundesanstalt have demonstrated MRAM devices with 1 nanosecond settling times, better than the currently accepted theoretical limits for DRAM, although the demonstration was a single cell. The differences compared to flash are far more significant, with write speeds as much as thousands of times faster. However, these speed comparisons are not for like-for-like -like current. High-density memory requires small transistors with reduced current, especially when built for low standby leakage. Under such conditions, write times shorter than 30 nanoseconds may not be reached so easily. In particular, to meet solder reflow stability of 260 degrees Celsius over 90 seconds, 250 nanoseconds pulses have been required. This is related to the elevated thermal stability requirement driving up the right bit error rate. In order to avoid breakdown from higher current, longer pulses are needed. For the perpendicular STT MRAM, the switching time is largely determined by the thermal stability delta as well as the write current. A larger delta better for data retention, would require a larger write current or a longer pulse. A combination of high speed and adequate retention is only possible with a sufficiently high write current. The only current memory technology that easily competes with MRAM in terms of performance at comparable density is Static Random Access Memory SRAM. SRAM consists of a series of transistors arranged in a flip-flop, which will hold one of two states as long as power is applied. Since the transistors have a very low power requirement, the switching time is very low. However, since an SRAM cell consists of several transistors, typically four or six, its density is much lower than DRAM. This makes it expensive, which is why it is used only for small amounts of high-performance memory, notably the CPU cache in almost all modern central processing unit designs. Although MRAM is not quite as fast as SRAM, it is close enough to be interesting even in this role. Given its much higher density, a CPU designer may be inclined to use MRAM to offer a much larger but somewhat slower cache, rather than a smaller but faster one. It remains to be seen how this trade-off will play out in the future. <inaudible> Endurance The endurance of MRAM is affected by write current, just like retention and speed, as well as read current. When the write current is sufficiently large for speed and retention, the probability of MTJ breakdown needs to be considered. If the read current write current ratio is not small enough, read disturb becomes more likely, i.e., a read error occurs during one of the many switching cycles. The read disturb error rate is given by 1 exp tread tau exp delta 1 a red icrit where tau is the relaxation time 1 nanosecond and icrit is the critical write current Higher endurance requires a sufficiently lower red icrit however a lower red also reduces red speed topic overall 
MRAM has similar performance to SRAM, enabled by the use of sufficient right current. However, this dependence on right current also makes it a challenge to compete with the higher density comparable to mainstream DRAM and flash. Nevertheless, some opportunities for MRAM exist where density need not be maximized. From a fundamental physics point of view, the spin transfer torque approach to MRAM is bound to a rectangle of death formed by retention, endurance, speed, and power requirements, as covered above. While the power speed trade off is universal for electronic devices, the endurance retention trade off at high current and the degradation of both at low delta is problematic. Endurance is largely limited to 108 cycles. Topic. Alternatives to MRAM Flash and EEPROM's limited write cycles are a serious problem for any real RAM like ROLL. In addition, the high power needed to write the cells is a problem in low power ROLLs, where non volatile RAM is often used. The power also needs time to be built up in a device known as a charge pump, which makes writing dramatically slower than reading, often as low as 1 1,000th as fast. While MRAM was certainly designed to address some of these issues, a number of other new memory devices are in production or have been proposed to address these shortcomings. To date, the only similar system to enter widespread production is ferroelectric RAM, or FRAM sometimes referred to as ferrum. Also seeing renewed interest are silicon oxide nitride oxide silicon Sonos memory and RERAM. 3DX Point has also been in development, but is known to have a higher power budget than DRAM. History 1955 — Magnetic core memory had the same reading-writing principle as MRAM, 1984 Arthur V. Pohm and James M. Dorton, while working for Honeywell, developed the first magnet resistance memory devices. 1984 GMR effect discovered. 1988 European scientists Albert Furt and Peter Grunberg discovered the giant magnetoresistive effect in thin film structures. 1989 Home and Dorton left Honeywell to form Nonvolatile Electronics, Inc., later renamed to NVE Corp., sublicensing the MRAM technology they have created. 1995 Motorola, later to become Freescale Semiconductor, subsequently, NXP Semiconductors, initiates work on MRAM development. 1996 Spin torque transfer is proposed. 1998 Motorola develops 256 kilobits MRAM test chip. 2000. IBM and Infineon established a joint MRAM development program. 2000. Spintech Laboratories' first spin torque transfer patent. 2002. NVE announces technology exchange with Cypress Semiconductor. Toggle patent granted to Motorola. 2003 — A 128 kilobits MRAM chip was introduced, manufactured with a 180 nanometers lithographic process 2004 — June — Infineon unveiled a 16 MBIT prototype, manufactured with a 180 nanometers lithographic process September — MRAM becomes a standard product offering at Freescale October — Taiwan developers of MRAM tape out 1 megabit parts at TSMC. October — Micron drops MRAM, mulls other memories. December — TSMC, NEC, Toshiba describe novel MRAM cells. December — Renaissance technology promotes a high-performance, high-reliability MRAM technology. Spintech Laboratories' first observation of thermal-assisted switching as MRAM approach. 
Crocus Technology is founded, the company is a developer of second generation MRAM. 2005 January Cypress Semiconductor samples MRAM, using NVEIP. March Cyprus to sell MRAM subsidiary. June Honeywell posts data sheet for 1 MBIT RAD hard MRAM using a 150 nm lithographic process. August MRAM record, memory cell runs at 2 GHz. November Renaissance Technology and Grandis collaborate on development of 65 nanometers MRAM employing spin torque transfer STT. November NVE receives an SBIR grant to research cryptographic tamper responsive memory. December Sony announced the first lab produced spin torque transfer MRAM which utilizes a spin polarized current through the tunneling magnetoresistance layer to write data. This method consumes less power and is more scalable than conventional MRAM. With further advances in materials, this process should allow for densities higher than those possible in DRAM. December — Freescale Semiconductor Inc. demonstrates an MRAM that uses magnesium oxide, rather than an aluminum oxide, allowing for a thinner insulating tunnel barrier and improved bit resistance during the write cycle, thereby reducing the required write current. Spintech Laboratory gives Crocus Technology exclusive license on its patents. 2006 February – Toshiba and NEC announced a 16 megabits MRAM chip with a new power forking design. It achieves a transfer rate of 200 megabytes per second, with a 34 nanoseconds cycle time, the best performance of any MRAM chip. It also boasts the smallest physical size in its class, 78.5 square millimeters, and the low voltage requirement of 1.8 volts. July, on July 10, Austin, Texas, Freescale Semiconductor begins marketing a 4 MBIT MRAM chip, which sells for approximately $25 per chip. 2007 R&D moving to spin transfer torque RAM SPRAM February, Tohoku University and Hitachi developed a prototype 2 MBIT non-volatile RAM chip employing spin transfer torque switching. August, IBM, TDK partner in magnetic memory research on spin transfer torque switching IBM and TDK to lower the cost and boost performance of MRAM to hopefully release a product to market. November, Toshiba applied and proved the spin transfer torque switching with perpendicular magnetic anisotropy MTJ device. November, NEC develops world's fastest SRAM compatible MRAM with operation speed of 250 MHz. 2008 Japanese satellite, SpriteSat to use Freescale MRAM to replace SRAM and flash components June, Samsung and Hynix become partner on STT MRAM June, Freescale spins off MRAM operations as new company Everspin August, scientists in Germany have developed next generation MRAM that is said to operate as fast as fundamental performance limits allow, with write cycles under 1 nanosecond. November – Everspin announces BGA packages, product family from 256 kilobits to 4 megabits 2009 June – Hitachi and Tohoku University demonstrated a 32 MBIT spin transfer torque RAM SPRAM. June – Crocus Technology and Tower Semiconductor announced deal to port Crocus MRAM process technology to Tower's manufacturing environment November – Everspin releases SPI MRAM product family and ships first embedded MRAM samples 2010 April – Everspin releases 16 megabits density June – Hitachi and Tohoku Univ announced multi-level SPRAM 2011 March – PTB, Germany, announces below 500 PS 2G 
CBIT S Wright Cycle 2012 November Chandler Arizona USA Everspin debut 64 megabits street MRAM on a 90 nanometers process December a team from University of California Los Angeles presents voltage controlled MRAM at IEEE International Electron Devices meeting 2013 November Buffalo Technology and Everspin announce a new industrial SATA 3 SSD that incorporates Everspin's spin torque MRAM Saint MRAM as cache memory 2014 January researchers announced the ability to control the magnetic properties of core shell antiferromagnetic nanoparticles using only temperature and magnetic field changes 2016 April – Samsung Semiconductor Chief Kim Keenam says Samsung is developing an MRAM technology that will be ready soon. July – IBM and Samsung report an MRAM device capable of scaling down to 11 nanometers with a switching current of 7.5 microamps at 10 nanoseconds. August Everspin announces it was shipping samples of the industry's first 256 megabit street MRAM to customers. December Instant and Toshiba independently present results on voltage controlled MRAM at International Electron Devices meeting. Topic: Applications. Proposed uses for MRAM include devices such as aerospace and military systems, digital cameras, notebooks, smart cards, mobile telephones, cellular base stations, personal computers, battery-backed SRAM replacement, datalogging specialty memories, black box solutions, media players, and book readers. See also